Lukeman Nation. This is Abdul Shahi Lukeman. And this is Jackie Lukeman. And this is a segment which we call In Case You Missed It. This is a segment where we talk about a news story or two that occurred during the week that we won't be able to cover during our Sunday shows. And so, um, with that being said, the first thing that we want to talk about is a major story for this past week mm -hmm. that I'm sure all of you have heard about. And this is the incident which took place in McKinney, Texas. Right, right. This incident involved a pool party that was uh, hosted by a 19-year-old girl. She was throwing an end-of-school pool party for mm -hmm. her friends. Um, and it just turned into a, a terrible, terrible uh, melee. Now, most of us are familiar with the videotape that has surfaced and made its rounds around social media. Mm -hmm. um, you have it, it focused around um, uh, the video shows a police officer who has since recently resigned due to his actions. Right. But it shows uh, this officer uh, basically using excessive force against a group of black teenagers, yes. and in particularly um, a 14-year-old black girl mm -hmm. uh, uh, who was wearing a bikini. Um, it also showed um, this officer, the same officer, mm -hmm. pulling out his weapon on unarmed children. Right, right. And let's say, let's, let's be clear that the officer, Officer Case Bolts, police chief, a uh, police captain, strongly condemned his actions. So uh, the professionals have looked at his actions and said they were inappropriate and, and excessive. But there's been a lot of, of uh, support for, for this guy and what he did. And, that, and that's concerning to me. And you're right. I mean, the, this, this incident, like a lot of incidents, uh, like a lot of incidents uh, which, which which we have seen lately, which involved um, police officers in the black community, mm -hmm. finds itself being split down racial lines. Right, yeah. The thing is, though, people are trying to say that this incident created uh, this racial division in the, com in the community uh, in McKinney, Texas, but those racial divisions actually were already there because of uh, the Coral, uh, I'm sorry, because of the Craig Ranch communities refusal to allow affordable housing to be built in their community. Uh, several years ago, I think it was in 2009, they were sued by an affordable housing advocacy group because they blocked efforts that the city was making to build affordable housing in the very wealthy and, wealthy and uh, predominantly white, it's not completely white, but predominantly white uh, section of the Craig Ranch neighborhood. And, 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 and that's uh, what you just said is, is really significant because, okay, according to some of the witnesses, especially mm -hmm. the black children, mm -hmm. they, they uh, it stated that um, this whole incident started mm -hmm. when uh, some white adults came out and started to hurl insults at the black children who were attending this pool party. Right. And one of the insults that they said to the children was, why don't you go back to your Section 8 housing? Mm -hmm. So this seems to have been some type of issue. Uh, within McKinney, Texas, mm -hmm. but um, but let, let's go on and like like I said, um, some of you have seen the video, mm -hmm. and the reason why I said it goes along racial lines is because, for the most part, um, you had the white residents who, um, and, and this was coming from now the one who took the video was um, a resident, but it was also uh, a white teenager. Right. Pardon me, who took the video. Right. Mm -hmm. And this white teenager um, affirmed or confirmed mm -hmm. that, you know, that um, the white adults were complaining about the number of black children mm -hmm. that were at this pool party. Right. And um, so the police were called. Um, from what we understand, 12 police officers showed up mm -hmm. along with uh, this officer. Officer Casebolt. Oh, yeah, he Officer Casebolt. Officer Bolt. number 13. Right, he was Officer number 13. So you had a very large police presence right. at this pool party. For a pool party. For kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so you had a large police presence. Now, from what I've seen from the video, um, most of the police officers there, to be fair, mm -hmm. um, were basically calm, mm -hmm. trying to assess the situation, trying to find out what is going on. Mm -hmm. But it was this one guy. Right. Um, I, I thought I, when I was watching the video, I thought I was watching um, the old Keystone Cops. I know. What was the whole barrel roll about? Oh, I mean, I, <laughs> they say that he tripped over a tree root, but I'm sorry. That looked really, that looked like a very well orchestrated barrel roll. Well, and then you, you, you look at it this way. 
this is what ha um, the media spend it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we all saw this video, mm -hmm. and just like all these incidences, whether it was Eric Gardner or, or you know, or any other uh, incident that we've seen recently that been caught on video. Mm -hmm. No, even though the video exists, and even though we see the video, it's apparently that everybody doesn't see it the same way. Right. And right. so now you look at the media, and you have um, Fox News and, and other um, right-wing conservative outlets. Um, they see it differently. Mm -hmm. And from what I saw watching uh, and listening to talk radio mm -hmm. and, and watching Fox News, they seen it as the black kids not complying. Right. They seen that this officer's job was made more difficult because the black kids ran away from the cop. Um, they didn't mm -hmm. comply. Mm -hmm. um, even making justification for the cop pulling out his gun on the kids right. by saying that, well, even though he slammed the 14-year-old black girl on the ground, on concrete, mind you, mm -hmm. and even though she didn't pose a physical threat to him, mm -hmm. the black males running up on him mm -hmm. um, uh, posed a threat. And even the, the racially coded narrative by people like Sean Hannity who stated on his show that the officer might have been afraid of being shanked. Right. And by, by kids who were leaving a pool party. Let's make that clear. What the residents wanted was for the kids to leave. Right. So they did. And they're still blaming these kids for the police officer's actions when the kids were doing exactly what they were told. Now, here is a part of the narrative that maybe people might have missed. The, there were apparently some kids who were climbing the fence to get into the pool. Okay. But why were they doing that? They weren't actually crashing the party because many of the kids who were there had key card access passes to the pool. Well, what does that tell you? No, it tells me they were residents. Exactly. And the other kids who didn't have key card access passes had guest passes and they could bring up to I think it was two people on a guest pass mm -hmm. so those kids were invited to that party now what happens when you throw a party you can never really tell how many people are going to show up well also I heard that this was also advertised on social media right that right. happened too so there were probably right. a few gate crashers because what when in the history of kids throwing a party has there not been kids who just show up? That you but know. but what's what's disturbing about even gate crashing, which happened even when I was a teenager, right. we used to have house parties. Right. What's disturbing is not the gate crashing. What's mm -hmm. disturbing is the response to it. Exactly. And remember, this is a pool party. Right. This is a pool party that, in fact, adults were in attendance for. Now they may not have been a part of the party, but they were at the pool, and and there was an adult there, the hostess's mother. Okay, so from what I understand that, you know, there was a fight between the, the young lady who right. uh, 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 organized the party and one of the right. residents? Actually, not one of the residences. Uh, not one of the residents. Uh, more than one of them. It was two women and a man. Here is the interesting part of this story that I know people missed uh, if, they don't, if they don't watch Fox News, which I hope most sane people don't. But... The man who Fox News has been interviewing this past week uh, as, as one of the people who called the police okay. because too many kids showed up at the party, not because of the fight, but because too many kids showed up at the party, is a man named Sean Toon. Mm. Sean Toon was present at the pool. He was present at the party. He was present at the fight between not just one adult, two adults and the 19 year old uh, hostess. Okay. He is friends with the two women who fought with uh, the hostess. He did not mention that as he was being interviewed on Fox mm. News. He said on Fox News that the problem was started by the kids climbing over the fence. He did not mention that those kids had key card access. He didn't mention that they had uh, guest passes. He didn't mention that they were all invited. And he did not mention the racial slurs that he and his friends uh, leveled at the 19-year-old hostess and her friend, who, by the way, is white. But neither was, they at, neither was he asked about it. 
by so called exactly. journalists. He was not asked about right. the fight between the two white adult women and the 19 year old black hostess. He wasn't asked about that and he didn't offer that information. The only thing that the interviews that he did on Fox were focused on was the behavior, quote unquote, of the kids. Okay. Who, remember, were either residents of uh, the neighborhood or who were invited. Now this is another thing that troubles me with this whole uh, incident. and. It's not over. I mean, uh, just no. Monday, um, mm -hmm. they, there was a big rally down there. Yes. Um, some members of the New Black Panther Party. Uh, I mean, you know, social media lit up with mm -hmm. um, stories mm -hmm. of the New Black Panther Party, Nation mm -hmm. Islam, right. and uh, bikers and, yeah. and neo conservatives and all this biker stuff. Biker gang. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, and um, so this could this is really a tinderbox. Um, you know, but what but what really bothers me um, is. Uh, the way that the media covered this, um, we were talking about how Fox in particular, uh, Megyn Kelly, um, uh, the justification for this use of force against against kids. Mm -hmm. um, Megyn uh, Kelly, who uh, since po apologized for her remarks. Sort of. Sort of, yeah, with her smugness. Um, she stated that um, when uh, that, you know, uh, the young lady, mm -hmm. uh, that she wasn't a saint. Uh, and um, you know, uh, like, and, and this is this is this is something that really bothers me, is because the 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 um, uh, it's it's inferred that um, because she was there in the bikini, mm -hmm. and let's talk about issues of this over sexualization of, of black right. women right. and black females mm -hmm. is that because she was there in a bikini. Um, you know, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. You know, she's no saint either. Right. She's not right. just a fourteen-year-old. A uh, 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 girl mm -hmm. who has right. a bikini going at to a pool, a pool party. Going, going to the pool party. So Megan Kelly um, had to walk that back a little. Mm -hmm. uh, we also talk about Sean Hannity, um, who really should be off the air. Mm -hmm. um, this guy is a race baiter. He made his fortune off of race baiting. Mm -hmm. But he um, mentioned that, that when he was um, giving an interview with some of the uh, residents of McKinney, mm -hmm. he said, um, "Well, you know, the officer could have been afraid of his life." Um, you know, he was afraid of being shanked. Right. You know, right. now shanked, again, racially coded. Mm -hmm. You know, not that he could have been assaulted mm -hmm. or he could have been stabbed mm -hmm. or he could have been, no, shanked. Mm -hmm. And we all know that when you hear the word shank, it's racially coded. Right. Um, Sean Hannity also stated that, um, uh, you know, they, he also gave this false narrative along with some other journalists that the kids didn't comply. Now, I don't know what video they saw, mm. but the video that I saw, showed that the children, um, and that's what they were, that's what they are, children, mm -hmm. that um, for the most part, they didn't run. Somebody said, and we're going to deal with that other video um, of uh, this black woman in McKinney, Texas, who, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, she gave her take on it. But, right. um, but the kids didn't run. Mm -hmm. I didn't see where the kids were disrespectful. Mm -hmm. What I saw was an out-of-control cop. Right. And what I saw was a, a, a police officer who... Uh, but, um, who bypassed all of the white kids that were there. Mm -hmm. In fact, the white kid who was holding the camera, who made the video, mm -hmm. stated himself that he felt invisible. Right. That, you right. know, and he watched mm -hmm. as all the black kids. And this, and, and this, is, the, this is what should concern us. Mm -hmm. um, not only as black people, black parents, mm -hmm. but even the society as a whole, is the fact that why is it when our children are involved why the aggressiveness? Right, right. And, and, and it's this idea that I think Jonathan Capehart uh, expressed so well in a very short video that I hope you go find on WashingtonPost.com. Uh, he explained this idea that black kids don't get to be kids in America. Exactly. We have to give our kids the talk. when, And we're not talking about sex. We have to talk to our children about how to conduct themselves, not if, but when they are approached by the police. And, and black children get this talk no matter where they live, no matter what socioeconomic uh, uh, bracket their family lives right, in, right. every black parent has to give their black child, especially their sons, but now we have to give it to our daughters. Yes. 
the talk about how you should conduct yourself when you are approached by the police if you want to leave the encounter alive. And you know, I heard um, uh, uh, a police, uh, uh, a retired police woman from LA, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, most of my ideas are not original. So, but this, um, I was listening to the radio and a retired police woman from LA who um, is an activist who mm -hmm. tries to work with police departments to reform some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, she used a, a term that um, I found interesting. She said that most of the time our kids are being punished by what she calls contempt of cop or mm. contempt by cop. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what that means, what I understood it to mean, was that um, where we seen videos all the time of white kids, mainly white males, mm -hmm. who confront the police. Yes. I mean, voluntarily confront the police mm -hmm. to either spout off their rights or they mm -hmm. walk around with assault mm -hmm. rifles. They do everything to provoke the police right. in order to show the police that they that they know what their rights are. Right. And, you know, and very confrontational. Mm -hmm. um, but contempt by cop or contempt of cop, however you want to use it, um, shows that black people and black kids do not have that right. Like, it's justified, we just, you know, not we, but society justifies the use of force mm -hmm. if black people even look like they're right. going to challenge the cop, even if they're in the right. Yes. And you hear people say all the time, well, you're not going to win, so mm -hmm. um, even though mm -hmm. you, if you're right, that's not the time to mm -hmm. do it. And maybe they're right because of the, um, the, the disparities in responses mm -hmm. um, towards the uh, white community and the black community and others. But what I'm saying is, is the fact that what does this say to our children? Mm -hmm. What does this say about um, uh, uh, being in a country where they are told mm -hmm. that you know, you know, yeah, you you know, they call you an American citizen, mm -hmm. but you're really not an American right. citizen, mm -hmm. and because you don't get to have the same rights. Right. What I'm saying is, is the fact that um, it was right that this cop. I think this cop should have got fired. I believe he should have also. And um, you know, to allow him to resign to me. Um, was probably something that they, the township had to deal with the unions, right? Right. <laughs> you know? Because you don't, you didn't want to have to have him suing for his pension. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so you know, he, they allowed him to resign so that he could keep his pension and they could keep the police union off their back. And we, we all understand now. Well, I, I hope more of us understand now how powerful and how obstructionist police unions can be. Some police unions can be when it comes to issues of holding police officers who violate citizens' rights accountable. You know, you know, in watching that video, I kind of felt like, you know, I was transported back to like the 1960s. Like, right. you know, when you had um, uh, um, black children um, integrating a school mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you had the white community, you know, come out and they try to prevent that. Right. Um, you know, I, I really thought that in 2015, I felt like in 2015, the fact that, um, uh, you know, we always talk about wanting this, this society, uh, this diverse society. Mm -hmm. um, we always talk about Martin Luther King's dream of being judged by your um, character and not mm -hmm. by your skin and all right, this stuff. Right, right. Yet in 2015, you have black children being told to go back to Section 8 housing. Mm -hmm. You have black children still, um, even when, the off when officers arrive to on the scene, the, the first reaction that they have towards black skin mm -hmm. is aggression. Right. Um, yeah. The fact that, um, that even when it's shown in full view of a video, that, um, that even when the black kids are complying, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it is still not enough. Yeah. I mean, when you... When you look at the entire almost eight minute video that, that the young man uh, shot that you can find on YouTube, it, it's sort of, the, the beginning of it seems to be him talking to a friend of his and they're, they're almost arguing like little boys do about who's going to do something cool because Officer Casebolt dropped his flashlight, I think, or one of the officers dropped his flashlight. Right, yeah, so the kid was picking it up, and, and he wanted to take the flashlight to the police officer. And the, you hear this other voice off frame saying, no, I want to take it. So, they, I mean, these are children, like you said. Mm -hmm. You know, these are little kids doing what kids do. Right. Well, maybe not little kids, but they're kids doing what kids do. So they go over to a police officer who is talking to a group of young black guys, a group of young men, a group of kids. 
He's standing there having a very calm conversation with a group of very calm kids. Right, right. Now, when the police initially came, some of the kids must have run because the police officer who is talking to the group of, of boys says to them in a really calm, really just conversational, hey, look, guys, when the police come, you shouldn't run like that. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's not really cool all the time. Right. And, and I appreciate that police officer's uh, perspective, his guidance, what he had to say, and the way he said it. Our dog is back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the way he said it. But when you look at the situation those kids were faced with, they were trying to go to a pool party that they were invited to. Oh. Right. And nine police cars speed onto the scene lights, sirens, the whole thing. 13 cops jump out of the cars. They're already being kept out of the pool by white pool attendants. There's an argument, a fight inside the pool area between two white people who were attacking the black girl. I'd run too. And right. I'm 47 yeah. years old. And, because and clearly something was going on there that was a much bigger deal than you just don't want me that then it was just too many kids at the pool and another thing and I you know I, I want to really bring attention to um, this self deputation that you see mostly with white citizens oh, when yeah. it comes to police and blacks mm -hmm. um, you know somebody had mentioned and you see in the video a very large white man mm -hmm. um, who I haven't heard what, who you know what his identity is who he is or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you see him standing over mm -hmm. um, uh, the officer while he was um, basically brutalizing this young black yeah. girl yeah. Um, and seemed to be keeping um, uh, the other kids I guess acting like a, a wall or something, right? You know, right. But it reminded me of the the uh, incident that happened in California with the um, CHP officer mm -hmm. when the CHP officer was beating on the um, woman on the highway, right? And you had some citizen, um, a white guy, mm -hmm. who happened to just pull over and walk, you know. So again, um, the message is being shown that you know. Um, and well, this is the way I take it. Mm -hmm. I take it like, um, you know, first of all, when it when there's a cop and a black um, person involved with each other, that to a lot of uh, people, the cop is automatically in the right. Right. That we have to come, you know, because, and, and it seems to be to be like a form of some kind of social control. Yes. Like we all have to band together mm -hmm. to keep these people in place. Right, right. And, and, now that might sound a little extreme, but this is the message that you get. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's extreme, especially when you couple that with the media narrative. When we go back to uh, the, the Fox News interviews with this Sean Toon person. Now, some uh, uh, a, a, a local uh, activist from Dallas uh, was also interviewed on Fox News. His last name was uh, Alexander. I can't remember what his first name is. But he was interviewed by Sean, interviewed by Sean Hannity. And Sean Hannity did what Sean Hannity does. Sean Hannity brings up this man's past and says, well, oh, you, I understand you have a criminal record and I understand you have a checkered past and why should we trust you? Because you, you know, you, you have criminal issues with the law. Something they didn't blah, do with blah, Sean Toons. That's the thing. There's this idea that it's, it's completely all right to criminalize every black person when there is any kind of interaction with that black person and the police. But we're automatically supposed to listen to a white person who says they're a witness and their past doesn't matter at all. But in this case, the past of Sean Toon is very uh, much an issue as is the past of Officer Case Bolton. Right, and we also understand that even that behavior is not nothing new. One of these days, we're going to cover um, where that behavior comes from. Mm -hmm. And um, you might want to uh, research a man named by the uh, name of Frederick L. Hoffman. Oh, and uh, yes. where a lot of this attitude of um, uh, black skin being uh, synonymous with black with criminality. Right. And how, um, you know, white people and their criminality um, is basically um, some, well, is, is basically excused right and so and, and we'll talk about that in subsequent shows mm -hmm. but um you know i just want to say that you know we really have a, 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 a very deep issue 
um, in this country when kids cannot be allowed to be kids. Um, we were all teenagers at one time. I remember um, uh, in the city of Camden where I grew up, there was a pool um, in a complex mm -hmm. that we used to sneak in and swim. Right. Um, it, you know, we were kids and, mm -hmm. it was, and we, we were trespassing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but no, no, no one, came, no one uh, criminalized it. Right. They looked at it like it was a bunch of kids that took risks, mm -hmm. um, did what they did, mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 that's the way it was looked at. It was looked at teenage mischief. Right. That's how we look. But right. this is not the case here. And no. see, and that's the thing. We could talk about legitimate um, teenage mis uh, uh, misbehaving. Right. But this wasn't the case here. Right. This was not the case at all. This was a, a situation where people in a, in a wealthy, predominantly white neighborhood almost literally saw too many black kids in one place and freaked out. And let's talk about this whole thing about class. Yes. Because it does, it does come down to class. It, it does. What you have is this illusion mm -hmm. in America. When you have working class people who may be making a little bit, a couple of dollars mm -hmm. more than someone else, mm -hmm. um, thinking um, that they're so much better, better mm -hmm. than other Americans. Right. And this is one of the very dark sides of what I call um, of this raw capitalist society we live in. Yes. This is the dark side of um, this. Uh, of, um, this. The, the way that that we relate to one another based on materialism yes you know yes. and um, so you have people one of the ladies um, uh, what worked um, for for a bank yes as a contractor for a bank right you know, not not a wealthy woman not at no, all no I don't think she was right. a wealthy woman no. right so so you're talking about people who are working class people right right and so you know, now they want to to um, uh, have this class distinction, mm -hmm. which isn't valid, mm -hmm. but, you know, but it's automatically um, said to the black people to go back to your Section 8 housing. Mm -hmm. So you have the classism there right. by right. people who um, are probably a paycheck away from foreclosure and homelessness exactly. themselves. Exactly. Yeah. The, the assumption that these kids did not belong in this neighborhood just by virtue of the fact that they were black. Right. Right. They, they may not be residents in the, the particular subdivision where that pool was, because from what I understand, this is a pretty big neighborhood and it probably had a lot of different subdivisions in it. So, okay, they may not have lived in that particular subdivision where the pool was, but, but many of them were clearly residents of that neighborhood. The host of the party was. Wow. But these people who were also residents of the neighborhood automatically assumed they didn't belong there and actually said that to some of the kids, you don't belong here because of the color of their skin. But the issue you bring up about class crossing racial boundaries is a very interesting one because here's something else that people I'm sure missed. One of the young ladies who was with the uh, party hostess when the fight between the two white ladies broke out was a white girl. Mm. And she confirmed the original story that the young lady told about the racial epithets being hurled at her by the two white ladies and you know something rude and nasty being said by the white man who was there, which Mr. Toon also did not admit on his Fox News interview. But um, the young lady's mother, the young white girl's mother said of the neighborhood that they had planned to move out and move to Dallas because they didn't like how some people in the neighborhood seemed to have this sense of entitlement because they had a little money. Right. So she did not like how some people looked down on her. And she's a white woman. Was this the same woman who said her husband coined a phrase called him thirty thousand millionaires? Yes, thirty thousand dollars yes. millionaires. Yes, thirty thousand dollar millionaires. Right, right. She said that she was planning on moving her family out of that neighborhood because of the classist, snobbish, uh, elitist attitude that some of the white residents had toward even them. So this isn't. You're right. This isn't just an issue of racism. It's also classist. Exactly. Well, you know, this is um, our first story on In Case You Missed It. Yes. And um, join us on Sunday at 3.30 mm -hmm. uh, for coffee, coffee current, current events, events, and, and politics, politics with Abdul Shahi Lukman and Jackie Lukman. We'll catch you on Sunday.